from scratch, or almost from scratch, we'll use something called Create React App. But we won't just clone another project. But we don't want to have to write every line of CSS and so on ourselves, because there's just not enough time. We can talk through some of it, but we'll do kind of what we did with Dwarf Underground and have a static version of it. It's just going to be a static version from a separate repository, because you're going to create your repository from scratch. So there's a project called Static Note Herder out on GitHub. I'm pasting this in Slack presently. So you can clone that, and that holds all the markup and CSS and some of the images that you're going to need. So just copy the URL, do a git clone, and then we're going to want some stuff out of there here in a bit. For right now, go ahead and change into the uh, static note herder directory, and then just open a new tab in your terminal. If you're using git bash or something, just open a new window. You can right click on its icon in the taskbar and click git bash again, open a new window. Because now we're going to create our new project from scratch. And I promised we would use create react app. So make sure you're not in the static note herder directory. Make sure you're in the directory where all your other projects are, extern bootcamp or whatever you called it, XTBC. And we're going to make a project from scratch using Create React App, which you all installed as part of the uh, setup process. This is the uh, GitHub page for Create React App. I'm pasting this in Slack as well. It has a fantastic README. Don't do, don't do that yet. The README includes this full user guide, which you know most of it's going to be a little above your head at the moment. But once you get a little more familiar with React, this answers a lot of questions about how you do a certain thing, and especially how you do, do it within a project that was created with Create React App instead of creating it from a totally blank page. This isn't the real this isn't the real note herder. Yeah, this is just the static HTML that we're gonna that sort of defines the look and we're just gonna borrow from that. Don't do anything else with it yet. So we're gonna create real note herder, not static. So again, make sure you're not inside another project folder. Type create dash react dash app space note herder. And I think Seth already sang the praises of Yarn over NPM. Uh, so Create React App will use Yarn if it's there. NPM these days has a little bit of trouble on Windows. And it's just way slower anyway. So some stuff happens. And it outputs some information. Success, created it, blah, blah, blah. Inside that directory, you can run several commands. Yarn start, yarn build, yarn test, yarn eject. We suggest that you begin by typing cd space note order yarn start. Okay, sounds fun. cd space note order and yarn start will start our server. Well, in this case, I have something already running, um, which is okay to do on another port, but I don't actually want that thing running anymore anyway, so I'm going to kill it. Yarn start. And you should see this. So yay, it worked. Well, let's have a look at what's actually in there. So open up a new tab. You can keep your server running. And in your note herder directory, just type code space dot to open up your editor. And let's peruse the source here and see what gets created in a blank Create React app. app. Node modules folder. What's that? 
You probably know what the node modules folder is for. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of stuff. Our dependencies. Holy crap, there's a lot in there. Where do those come from? How does it know what our dependencies are? There is. Anybody know where? Yeah. Package.json. Among other things, it includes a list of dependencies. Now, you only see three. Two dependencies and one dev dependency. And actually, in the very latest version of Create React app, which just came out a couple days ago, uh, that's been moved up to regular dependency. But what your package manager does is installs all of your dependencies' dependencies as well, and all of theirs, et cetera. So although there's only three dependencies to us, some of those have many, many dependencies, which is how we end up with so much stuff in node modules. So you don't actually need to commit the node modules to your repository because package.json tells a developer everything they need to know. They just need to clone your thing, run yarn install or npm install, and it'll create the node modules folder automatically. But that that's what that's about. And you'll notice down here, we also have a list of scripts that you can define. And those can be run with yarn start, yarn build, yarn test, yarn eject, or npm run start, npm run build, npm run test, run, npm run. OK. OK, cool. So that's package.json. Git ignore. Have we talked about git ignore before? So this tells git that certain files in this folder should never be managed by git. You type git add dot, it will continue to ignore them. It'll just pretend they're not there. They'll never show up in a git status or anything. And there are some in there by default with create react app. Among other things, the node modules folder is not included. So we don't have to remember to leave it out of our commits. It'll just be ignored by git altogether. There's a readme, of course, and the readme that it creates uh, basically has the whole table of contents for how to use create react app, which is handy, but I'll be getting rid of most of that in mine. Yarn.lock, as long as you use yarn to install, that tells it exactly which version of every dependency got installed all the way down the dependency tree so that if someone else clones this repository and runs install, they will get exactly the same dependencies that you had. Therefore, it can hopefully be relied upon to work the same way. And then there's a public directory and a source directory. The public directory contains things that would be sent to the browser exactly as is, like index.html. Let's open up index.html real quick and just change the title from React app to note herder. Small change. But if you do that, you'll see the browser updates. Because the server that it comes with does do hot reloading. We make a change in our code. It does refresh the browser automatically. And then there's the source directory, and that's where most of our code lives, all our components and stuff. These do not get sent to the browser exactly as is. This is all run through a transpiler, through a build system that transforms this into, in this case, real JavaScript, because we're using JSX, which is not real JavaScript. And the browsers don't understand that natively. So this translates that into proper JavaScript, smashes all of our scripts into one single JavaScript file. So for the sake of organizing our code, we can have as many as we want, but it's not going to create more HTTP requests for the end user. They still just get one fairly compressed minified file. Same with all the style sheets. They'll all be smashed together into one. So this is anything that should run through our build system. And the build system, thankfully, is already configured for us. It can be a little complicated, but Create React App does that for us. And it, in fact, hides the config files from us. We will learn on a future day how we could dig into that if we really wanted to. But for right now, we're just happy that Create React App makes it so that we don't have to care. So having done that, just change the title. 
Make darn sure you're in the right directory, your note header directory. Not the static one, right? The one we just created with create react app. And create a new Git repository. Git init. We're old pros at this now, I think. Do a git add. Ah. Make a commit. Initial commit. That's great. Now we have a repository on our machine, but not on GitHub yet, right? But we know how to fix that. Go out to GitHub. Create a new repository. Name it Note Herder. And since we already made a commit locally, we can just run these two lines that we've been done many times before. The first one adds the remote so that your repository knows about GitHub. And then you push it to that remote and tell it from now on, this is the remote I mean when I say push or pull. So copy those two lines. Run them. Refresh the page. And you have it.